Reverend Father Marciano Ardihan, our Rector and my Research Advisor. Reverend Father Idelberto Mesias, MF. Reverend Father Mark Marlon Lumbera, STHL. And Reverend Father Anthony Raymond R. Apostol, our Dean of Academic Affairs and Thesis Writing Professor. Good day. I, Bernardo Rodriguez Cito, am here today to present to you my research entitled Between the Lines, Ludwig Wittgenstein's Concept of Language Games and the Colloquial Language Subculture at St. Peter's College Seminary as part of the requirements for the degree Bachelor of Arts in Philosophy, minor in English. To start with, let's take a look on the objectives. This research study is intended to understand Wittgenstein's concept of language games, to identify what invigorates between the colloquial language and the language games, and lastly, to analyze and explore the language phenomena, the colloquial language subculture of the seminarians at St. Peter's College Seminary. In order to grasp the CLS at SPCS, awareness of its existence is primarily essential. With that, comprehension of the language of the seminarians at St. Peter's College Seminary follows. And ultimately, this study can be a thought-provoking subject for those in the academe, such as linguists, social linguists, sociologists, psychologists, anthropologists, and the like. Now, let's get to know Ludwig Josef Johann Wittgenstein. He is an Austrian-British philosopher. He was born on April 26, 1889, in Vienna, Austria. He was born to a wealthy Jewish Catholic family of Karl Wittgenstein and Leopold and Kahn. He was educated at home until he was 14. He attended Manchester University to study aeronautical engineering and he studied at Cambridge under Bertrand Russell. Wittgenstein has two major works, the Tractatus Logico Philosophicus, also known as the Early Wittgenstein, which was interrupted and deepened by the First World War, and the Philosophical Investigations, also known as the Later Wittgenstein, which is considered as his masterpiece, though published posthumously in 1951. During his final years, he spent his time by traveling and developing his philosophy. He died on April 29, 1951, with the words, Tell them I've had a wonderful life. Let's go now to his philosophy, the philosophy of language. The philosophy of language is under the main branch of philosophy, which is logic. For Wittgenstein, language is aptly used solitary for illustrating facts in the world. He thinks that confusion and problems of philosophy were brought about by language. He proposes the picture theory as he claimed that language has its exact and solitary meaning that can be pictured out. He himself rejected this idea and his own as he recognized the oversimplification of language activity in his work, The Tractatus. The whole of language. The whole of language includes everything that is part of language like the formal and informal languages. In the case of language games, it is just a small segment of the whole of language. It is good to remember that language game is like a game of language that has no out of bounds. Thus, the whole of language is so vast and no human mind can fully grasp. From here, we see how Wittgenstein is shifting his idea of what a language is. Essence of language. Sense is the grammatical essence of language, such that the world order is posited in the grammatical network itself. Wittgenstein maintains continuity between the Tractatus and his later philosophy. Regarding the problem of sense, here it shows that there are still some parts of Tractatus which Wittgenstein still claims in his philosophical investigations, such as the essence of language, where sense becomes the unfoldment of the grammar of the language game. Absolute Simples In Absolute Simples, Wittgenstein proves that his first claim is faulty. The ideal of perfect, exact of ordinary words and sentences cannot be attained. 
The ideas of simple and complex are necessarily relative to a language gain. Thus, the end point is still the vastness of language, wherein the more closely we examine an actual language, the conflict between language and philosophical ideal becomes sharper. Meaning as use Meaning is the stable and grammatically necessary phenomenon such that the more it is realized in the stream of life and language, deeper it appears to be embedded in the linguistic rules. Wittgenstein went against his former idea of language and came to think of language not as a system of representation but a system of devices for engaging in various sorts of social activity Hence, the meaning of word is its use in a particular context. Logical Compulsion In Logical Compulsion, Wittgenstein once again reproved his claim that logic reflects the structure of reality because any language that does not base in logic may attempt to make assertion about things that have no probable existence. Thus, the meaning of a word or phrase or proposition is nothing other than the set of informal rules governing the use of the expression in actual life. Again, the meaning of a word depends on the situation or the context. Ultimately, Wittgenstein claimed that the philosophy of language is the fundamental basis of all philosophical problems. Thus, the foundation of every philosopher should be the ordinary language. The concept of language games. Language is not a result of purely arbitrary human agreement in opinion, but a form of life, lived by a community. Language games is the pattern of activities and practices associated with some particular family of linguistic expression. The notion is associated with the later philosophy of Wittgenstein. This notion encourages us to think of the use of language in terms of a rule-governed, subcontained practice like a game. Game. Language as a game means that practice of language can be autonomous activity, like in any game. Its rules depend on the players and need not ultimate validation from the world. Though Wittgenstein called language as a game, it does not necessarily involve winning or losing, nor competition between players. However, unlike some other games that one can play alone, nobody can play language games solo, for through communal uses of language they arise. It is meant for communication. As a language, we can still use words without fixed definition. We may even alter our definitions if required. Objects of Comparison Language games as objects of comparison are always being compared to the formal language. Here comes the similarities and dissimilarities of meaning. Some colloquial terms have similarities from the standard, be it homonym, either by homographs or homophones. On the other hand, the similarities in terms of semantics or meaning can also be possible, even if they spell the same or sound the same. From that, family resemblance came. Wittgenstein says that the way in which family members resemble each other is not through a specific trait, but a variety of traits that are shared by some, not by all members of a family. Here, Wittgenstein attacks the traditional view that words acquire meaning from their meaning by standing for objects in reality. Wittgenstein says that some words do not have a single essence that encompasses their definition. Wittgenstein does not say that the family resemblance relation is not always the way that words get their meaning. Instead, words can get their meaning by picking out objects in reality, as he claims in the Tractatus. But he asserts that philosophers must recognize the difference between the varied methods of assigning meaning to words. Colloquial language Colloquial language refers to a collection of variations from the standard language. Some colloquial language terms, whether words, idiomatic phrases, or maxims, might fall under one or more of most of the other categories, such as argot, cant, creole, dialect, jargon, lingo, lingua franca, patois, pidgin, slang, and or vernacular. 
Thus, colloquial language is just a form of a language game, and at the same time, it is a social linguistic phenomenon widely used in everyday informal speeches. The colloquial language subculture. Language is the mirror of culture, and even if it has evolved into other forms, it will also produce more information about other things. In order to learn the colloquial language subculture of a particular community, critical awareness can be set aside because engagement in conversation is much more important in understanding how the colloquial language functions. The colloquial language subculture of the seminarians at St. Peter's College Seminary. In the context of seminary, the community has its own set of words or the colloquial language subculture in which some ordinary terms are used differently. We all know the denotation and connotation of words. That is the literal meaning and the associated meaning respectively. It is as simple as that. Wittgenstein used to explain his concept, the language game, using the dark rabbit image. He may have rejected his picture theory, but we cannot fully annihilate his idea. For he also tried to explain his later philosophy by using such picture in order to aid the understanding of what he really implies. The colloquial language subculture at St. Peter's College Seminary is undeniably vital, not just because of the development of the terms for the use of the community, but also because of the effects that emanated from them. It is indeed the fusion of language and of culture. For the conclusion, based on the pronouncements, the following conclusions are derived at. First, Ludwig Wittgenstein's concept of language game is an invented form of language with a particular purpose that is based on the necessity of a particular context. The idea of language game reveals language as something public, active, diverse, and constituted by rules. Second, the puzzling sets of words are regarded as colloquial language. All colloquial languages are considered as language game, for they widen the meaning of terms as they imply new or familiar connotations aside from the ordinary denotation. Third, the significance of colloquial language subculture as a language game at St. Peter's College Seminary. It is about its uses and its effects, including both positive and negative. In facilitating socialization, seminarians develop their logical and critical thinking in using and forming new colloquial terms. The colloquial language subculture is likewise used as a means of entertainment or pastime among the seminarians, for it also serves as an alternative to gadgets and social media. Recommendations Based on the conclusions, the following recommendations are formulated. First, in lieu of the fact that language is dynamic, the researcher recommends that Wittgenstein's concept of language be explored further through other concepts that the philosophical investigations offers, such as the private language argument and the family resemblance. Second, facing the challenges of constant change of language subculture, the researcher recommends that the seminarians improve its use by complementing the terms to the vocation in where they are into. The jargons yet to be reinvented by the seminarians ought to be used in positive ways, like jargons to commend success, jargons to boost self-esteem, jargons to inspire, and the like. With that, it may also serve as a way of promoting the language creates in a more affirmative way. Third, in facilitating socialization, the researcher recommends that the use of CLS and SPCS be constant, but not be abused. It should not be abused or should not harm others, especially those who belong to their community. For by the use of words, seminarians may express their thoughts, ideas, and even release stress through play of words. Ultimately, the more formal jargon such as liturgical terms, philosophical terms, and theological terms used by the seminarians at SPCS should be considered for future study 
since this study focused mainly on the colloquial language subculture as a language game. Thank you and may the good Lord bless us all.